from JBS Studios in Greater New York. This is the JBS News Update with Tisha Bader. I'm Tisha Bader with the JBS News Update for Tuesday, June the 18th, 2019. The Bahrain conference is fast approaching and it appears that a handful of Israelis will be there. Reuters reports that elected Israeli government officials are not invited to the gathering, but rather that the Israeli delegation will consist of private citizens involved in business, high-tech and innovation. The Times of Israel reports that former head of Kogat, the Israeli Defense Ministry's liaison to the Palestinians, Yoav Mordechai, was one of those invited and will attend. Speaking at a memorial ceremony today, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu said the conference was a very important one and said there would be Israelis present. Netanyahu said, in the open or in secret, we are in contact with many leaders from the Arab world and there are prodigious ties between Israel and Arab countries with most Arab countries. He also thanked the U.S. for trying to bring a better future to the region. As we have reported to you, Egypt, Morocco, Jordan, the United Arab Emirates, Qatar, and Saudi Arabia have all said they will attend. The conference is described as a workshop focusing on the economic aspect of the yet-to-be-unveiled U.S. peace plan between Israel and the Palestinians. It is co-hosted by the United States and Bahrain and taking place June the 25th and 26th in the capital of Manama. And Prime Minister Netanyahu yesterday appointed two more ministers to his interim cabinet. Rafi Peretz will lead the Education Ministry, Betzalel Smotrich the Transportation Ministry. The lawmakers are both from the Union of Right-Wing Parties. Again, these are interim positions until Israel holds new national elections in September. Israel reportedly reopened the Gaza fishing zone today. The area was closed last week, if you recall, after ongoing arson devices were launched from Gaza into southern Israel, sparking a number of fires and one device that had an explosive attached to it detonated as well. Meanwhile, a delegation from Qatar is in Gaza and Israel this week, meeting with electric company officials in Tel Aviv to discuss proposals for a new electricity line to Gaza, funded by the Persian Gulf country. Pro-Israel lobby APAC is urging the public to oppose the BDS campaign, the boycott, divestment and sanctions movement that seeks to delegitimize the state of Israel. There are currently two bipartisan resolutions being considered in the House and Senate against BDS. In the House, it is led by Democrat Brad Schneider of Illinois, Republican Lee Zeldin of New York, Democrat Jerry Nadler of New York, and Republican Ann Wagner of Missouri. In the Senate, Democratic Senators Ben Cardin of Maryland and Republican Rob Portman of Ohio lead that legislation. And Republican Senator Ted Cruz called on House Speaker Nancy Pelosi to pass a resolution in the House against anti-Semitism. As we reported to you, the Senate unanimously passed such a resolution last week. Cruz referred to a previous attempt by the House back in March to pass a similar bill, but that was ultimately broadened to include all forms of bigotry. Cruz said the House should try again, and I call on Speaker Pelosi to introduce and let the House vote on this strong, straightforward condemnation of anti-Semitism, which has now received the support of every single U.S. Senator, 100 to nothing. Jewish community leaders from 50 countries gathered in Bucharest, Romania today to address the challenges facing the Jewish community, including the battle against the rise of anti-Semitism. The conference was organized by the World Jewish Congress, the Federation of Jewish Communities of Romania, and Romanian Prime Minister and European Union Council President Vioritsa Dancila. Boston's Museum of Fine Arts acquired two pairs of rare Torah finials from the 17th and 18th centuries last week, paying half a million dollars for one of the sets, which was made in Hamburg in 1688 or 9, and considered to be among the earliest surviving examples of such ornaments. They were part of the Sotheby's auction of important Judaica held the previous week in New York City. Among other items of note sold was Isidore Kaufman's 1921 portrait of a rabbi with a young pupil. The painting by the Hungarian-born Jewish painter went to a private collector for $375,000.
Well, Google gave a shout out to one of the most popular foods in Israel and a favorite across the world. Falafel received the Google Doodle treatment today, celebrating the beloved Middle Eastern dish and even mentioning the Israeli song, We Have Falafel, sung by Nisim Garame. Taking a look now at our programming for tonight on JBS for Tuesday, June the 18th, we bring you exclusive television coverage of the American Jewish Committee's Global Forum, beginning at 7 tonight. At 9, Mark Golub sits down with Jack Laub, the first Jewish ball player in the NBA, who talks about his journey and his Jewish identity on L'Chaim. At 10, it's a review of Jews and basketball with Alan Dershowitz and YU professor Jeffrey Gurak. And right after this newscast, Insight to Israel. And that's the JBS News Update for Tuesday. Tuesday, June the 18th, 2019. I'm Tisha Bader.